Hey guys, today I'm just going to do a preview of the ATI Radeon 4770 graphics card. Now keep in mind this is just going to be a preview, but I'm going to include some preliminary benchmarks. So let's start off by looking at ATI's roadmap for quarter 1 and quarter 2 of 2009. The 4890 is a card, a high-end card, that recently launched to compete with the uh, NVIDIA GTX 275 at the $250 price point. The 4770, on the other hand, is planned to replace the 4830 on May 4th, launching at $100, which will make it a very competitive budget part, as you'll see in a minute, and should result in price cuts across the board from both ATI and NVIDIA. Taking a look at the card itself, one of the first things you'll notice is that it's quite small, um, a little smaller than the 4830 it's replacing. In this photo, the reference cooler is just a single slot cooler, but you should see some third-party vendors that will provide dual slot versions as well, um, which should offer better cooling and, and hopefully a less uh, noisy card. So here you can see the specifications of the card in this little handy chart I made. The main things to take note of are that this is going to be the first 40 nanometer card ever produced. What that means is that since there's a smaller fabrication process, it's going to be cheaper for ATI to produce this card, which is going to let them price uh, this card very low. Also, it's going to require less power and hopefully generate less heat. It also means they can pack more transistors into less, uh, less area. It's also going to use GDDR5 memory as opposed to GDDR3 memory. And it's going to have a 128-bit bus instead of a 256-bit bus, like you see in the 4830. So even though it's got a smaller bus size, since it's got the GDDR5 memory, which has greater bandwidth, that actually negates that disadvantage, and it's going to be pretty much the same. The really nice thing about this uh, 4770 is it's only going to use 80 watts of power at peak load, meaning that, you know, if you've got like a Dell computer or something that you're trying to upgrade with, say, like a 300-watt power supply unit, it's going to be great because you, you don't need one of those 400, 450 watt power supply units that you would probably need for something like a 4850. Um, and also, this is, I can't confirm this, but I'm pretty sure that the card's going to be powered solely through the PCI Express slot, meaning you don't need like a six pin power connector or anything like that. Um, so let me just tell you a few benchmarks, and these are straight from guru3d.com. They did uh, basically some preliminary benchmarks on a early engineering sample of the card. Keep in mind that the card they used was only clocked at 650 uh, megahertz, whilst the final card is going to be clocked at 700, 750 megahertz. Also they were using beta drivers, so um, the actual final card should perform better than this. Keeping that in mind, in Far Cry 2 at DirectX, uh, DirectX 10 mode with two times anti-aliasing, the card still managed to reach 37 frames per second. Well, as the 4850 was only slightly ahead, 40 frames per second. So I'm imagining that when the actual card's released, it should be uh, performing at the same level as the 4850, which is pretty impressive considering that the 4850 costs $150 right now. In Call of Duty World at War, using four times anti-aliasing and 16 times anisotropic filtering, the card reached 40 frames per second. The 4850 got uh, 40 frame, or excuse me, 43 frames per second. In Crisis Warhead, which is I, I know the game all you guys want to play on your computers, in DirectX 10 mode with two times anti-aliasing at 1600 by 1200, it reached 19 frames per second. In the 4850, slightly higher, 22 frames per second, which isn't really playable, but I imagine that you know without anti-aliasing, uh, you could probably play the game. In Left 4 Dead at 1920 by 1200, using eight times anti-aliasing and 16 times anisotropic filtering. The card reached 46 frames per second, the 4850, 51 frames per second. So, in conclusion, this is a great budget card for those looking to upgrade a PC with a less, power, uh, less powerful power supply unit, or just anyone who wants a good value card. You know, you don't want to have to spend $200, $250 on a graphics card that in two years is probably going to be kind of obsolete anyways. And if you're in the U.S., I recommend looking out for this card May 5th. And my favorite U.S. retailer is Newegg.com. If you live in Canada or the U.K., there are also some good uh, retailers out there. But anyways, thanks for uh, listening, and uh, look out for this card.